price performance. Plus, 400 worst-ranked stocks to avoid now. And to stay ahead of the market, you'll receive 10 weeks of complete value line service, now only $55. Call now, 800-535-8831 for your giant gift reference and start value line every week. 800-535-8831. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. When is a weak dollar good for business? Good? I don't know. The world of finance and investing can be pretty confusing, unless you call for this, the Wall Street Journal's Video Guide to Money and Markets. It explains the markets in clear, simple English and brings them to life. This exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just $37, over 20% off the newsstand price. Subscribe to the journal and get a daily view of the whole world of business and how it affects you. Information you know you should know. Call now and you'll be ready next time someone asks you. Are munis always a safe investment? I'm not sure. Call toll free 800 942 3200 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800 942 3200. The opening portion of Market Wrap is sponsored by the Travelers. You're better off under the umbrella. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Friday edition of Market Wrap. I'm Bill Griffith. Neil Cavuto has the day off. Here's what happened this Friday. Stocks drifted for most of the session. Uh, not much fundamental news for the markets to trade on. We did have that rush of volume that always accompanies the expiration of stock index futures, stock index options, and equity options, the so-called triple witching day. We'll have more on that in a moment. But first, a look at the unofficial closing numbers from Friday. With the Dow Jones Industrial Average down over five points on the close at the 3,018 level, but we are heading higher as we speak on that index. The uh, transport's finishing up four and a half points or thereabouts at 1185, and the utilities average down 0.38 at 207.62. On the New York Stock Exchange, the advances are leading the declines by a slim four to three margin, almost eight to seven, with 552 issues unchanged right now. And the broader market averages are mixed. The Standard & Poor's uh, 500 index down 0.37. The American Stock Exchange index up 1.59. And the NASDAQ over-the-counter composite index up over four points at 526.99. Well, as has become the norm lately, expiration day did turn out to be a non-event. Analysts who had been closely watching open interest in the stock index futures markets the last week or so had noted that there were still a number of contracts to be rolled over from the September to the December series. That meant they could uh, maybe see some volatility coming to the market today. But it didn't happen. Then late this afternoon, when the New York Stock Exchange disclosed the number of stocks with order imbalances of 50,000 shares or more, a report which usually includes dozens of big blue chips names and hundreds of thousands of shares, it included only five or six names and no imbalance exceeded more than 90,000 shares. Bonds staged a mild rally today on renewed Fed easing hopes, though prices are settling out off the highs of the day right now. Markets were already starting to clamor for a further easing after, even after last week's discount rate cut by the Federal Reserve. Then late yesterday afternoon's money supply figures added fuel to that particular fire. Though the widely watched M2 figure was up by more than $2 billion, that was less than had been expected, and money growth is still stagnant in many uh, views. Checking where the long bond is trading right now, we had been up about uh, 11 or 12 ticks. Now it is up 7.30 seconds, and the yield which got down to 7.87% right now is at 7.89%. Bond market did not pay a lot of attention to a survey showing an improvement in consumer confidence. The University of Michigan's index of consumer sentiment increased to 84.5% in early September. That is up from a reading of 82 for the entire month of August. The University Survey of Consumer Expectations, which is used by the Commerce Department in its leading economic indicator report, also increased in early September as well. Well, after admitting that it had found two more unauthorized cons customer bids, Solon Brothers ended the day on the downside. The company saying in a statement this morning that it had found evidence of two more improper bids submitted to a Treasury auction. The firm said the bids did not put it above the government's 35% limit on purchases in any one auction. There could be more revelations, however, to come. Solomon says it expects to find similar violations as it continues its investigation. Still, analyst John Keefe says that Solomon will survive in some form. The only analogy that we have really is Drexel Burnham, and they were pushed out of business by the federal government. Um, I, I think a lot really depends on uh, 
on, on how aggressive the feds want to uh, to prosecute uh, but with uh, without that push from the federal government I think Solomon can certainly survive as a smaller firm perhaps not as profitable and perhaps not as aggressive but they'll certainly still be around Solomon Brothers finishing the day down three it's a 22 and three eights they have already said it is selling some of its securities holdings to finance operations because it is it is it is having trouble borrowing money right now for obvious reasons Traders are pushing the dollar lower in New York, but there is little economic news moving the currency right now. The dollar had been higher earlier in the day. Analysts saying in anticipation of possible political turmoil in the Middle East or the Soviet Union over the weekend, but the dollar did turn lower midday on technical selling. Here's where it currently stands against the major currencies, down a quarter yen at 134.10. We were down about a third of a fennec against the Deutsche Mark at 168.40 and down less than a cent against the British pound at $1.7310. And usually at this time, every Friday in Market Hour, we talk with David Gilmore, senior currency analyst at MCM Currency Watch. However, he's away on business this week. Today, we are joined by Stephen Flanagan. He's vice president and currency analyst at Mitsubishi Bank, joining us from Wall Street right now. And I know that you're what you're going to say. I mean, the dollar couldn't even hold on to these gains that we saw earlier today. It continued its downward uh, bias, right? That's absolutely correct. Uh, today, the dollar met its minimum of corrective objectives of 170, just shy, and just shy of the 135 level in the dollar yen. And, of course, uh, as the growing perception across the market of a further Fed discount rate cut begins to uh, be speculated in the market, we saw the dollar come under a considerable amount of selling pressure or profit-taking. Again, it's just a corrective rally. It met its minimum objectives and is beginning to trade back off. Where do you see it going from here, Stephen? I mean, are we in this for a, a while longer? Are we near the bottom? What do you think? Well, um, one will have to pay particular attention next week with the Yugoslavian situation, the Russian situation, and of course the Gulf, uh, where I expect the dollar to trade and hold support levels. I think we've seen the near-term low of around 167 in the Deutsche Mark, 133 and a half in the yen. Um, but certainly, if those levels begin to break away, um, we would be under a considerable amount of uh, continued selling pressure. Yes, I, admittedly, if we get some political turmoil, as was evidenced earlier in this week when the Middle East situation cropped up once again, the dollar becomes something of a safe haven. But using the old economic term, all things being equal, let's assume we don't get political turmoil. Are we in this uh, the downside activity for a while, you think? Uh, yes, I would expect so. I would expect to be seeing uh, at some point in time in the near future, next month, a 160 level and a 130 level to be tested in the dollar mark and dollar yen. Are those comfortable levels for the central banks around the world or are we going to see them try and stem that and buy dollars at some point? Well, uh, late in the New York day there was a German finance minister uh, unnamed coming out and saying that 160 dollar mark would be a tough level for exporters to live with. So already we are beginning to see some uh, jaw boning. Uh, perhaps maybe uh, trying to break that dollar, expected dollar decline. Uh, I would not expect any intervention at those levels, uh, but certainly if we begin to break those levels with a lot of aggressiveness, perhaps uh, in the 150 mid-levels and uh, low 120 levels, perhaps we could expect something. Obviously, we've had quite a decline for the value of the dollar against major currencies. At some point, however, it starts to do damage to our economy in the form of inflation, uh, bringing exports over, uh, imports to this country. How soon before we start to see that creep in, if at all? Well, I don't really expect any, any of that to begin to creep in unless we break uh, the levels that we've already seen. And I would think uh, beyond the 150 level in the Deutsche Mark, beyond the 120 level in the yen, I think then that, uh, that becomes a, a critical uh, question that we're going to have to address. But uh, I think we have quite a bit of room between where we are now and that, that uh, point in time. And another analyst was pointing out this week we're getting a lot of activity now in some of the other currencies. We don't often follow that often because of the interest rate differential now that exist because our rates are coming down. The Canadian dollar is very active now. The Australian dollar is very active now. Yes, uh, the market actually we've been, you know, away from the high yielders. Uh, that was something we all watched in the uh, in the 90s, uh, late 80s, uh, the high yield currencies. And once again, uh, in a period of dollar uh, question, uh, the high yielders do uh, attract a tremendous amount of attention. Um, the Deutsche Mark at the moment uh, seems to be acting kind of as a high yielder also here now. So where would you see most of the action right now? Where, where would you think the best opportunities are for currency traders? Well, it looks like the dollar mark still has considerable room on the downside. All right, Stephen, good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Stephen Flanagan joining us from the our Wall Street Bureau of Mitsubishi Bank for this Friday. Well, it was once the Eastern Shuttle, remember that? Then it was the Trump Shuttle. Then it was going to be the Northwest Shuttle. And now, well, we'll have the answer next when Market Draft continues. Don't go away.
Today's Market Wrap, sponsored by GE. At GE, we bring good things to life. Freedom is all that matters. Freedom is everything. There's a new light shining over Eastern Europe. You know, the Hungarians are waiting for a very long time. A light of hope, joy, and most of all, a new light of freedom. Everything is changing. It's wonderful. It's a miracle. I'm so happy. And in this spirit, GE has entered into an historic partnership with a company called Tungsrum, Hungary's leading lighting company. Freedom is something that we have to work for very hard. It's like a dream. At GE, we're proud to play even a small part in helping the Hungarian people build what promises to be a truly brilliant future. I'm More valuable than most, this umbrella. Those who carry the travelers for business insurance carry a 127-year tradition of excellence, upheld by 35,000 employees dedicated to customer satisfaction, chosen by 50% of the Fortune 500. Open in case you want quality and service the traveler's way. You're better off under the umbrella. Jack Shea and Partners used to be in a skyscraper. Jack, it's Tokyo. Now it's next to a dairy farm. Mr. Hasegawa. Eating out has taken on a whole new meaning. But if the pace is slower, business is not. With AT&T, international data moves fast. And AT&T video conferencing is a smart alternative to overseas travel. And that's helping business a lot more than a fancy address. Jack, need a lift? Nah, I think I'll walk. A world of help from AT&T. Get ready for the most powerful investment tool you'll ever use. Add Express to your personal computer, and you've got a 24-hour financial information service right in your home. Fast, accurate, easy to use. Express gives you an insider's view of what's going on whenever you want it. Take charge of your financial future with Express. Call Express now for a special introductory offer. 1-800-7PC-NEWS. All right, before we check on the rest of the day's news, let's see how the major market numbers are settling out for the day. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down five points. We were whipsawed a bit on the close. We had been up about five or six points. Then it was down eight or nine uh, in the last hour of trading as we went into the expiration. And now we're finishing off those lows down five points at 3,019. For the week, if you're keeping score, the Dow was up 33 and a half points, a little more than a 1% gain for the weekend. The transports finished up six points today. The utilities average, which was negative the entire day, finished up 0.19 on the close at 208.19. And I'll point out also that the NASDAQ over the counter composite index finished at an all time high today. We don't have that graphic right now, but it finished at 527.18. Uh, the uh, previous all time high was about a point below that. Well, it now appears that American Airlines is the latest candidate to take over the Trump shuttle less than a week after a potential deal with Northwest Air fell apart. Dave Monsies reports. According to Trump officials, the talks with American are tailored very much like those that failed at Northwest. A management changeover for perhaps five years, then possibly ownership by American if the shuttle's debts can be repaid. But this time, it could be an outright takeover. American isn't saying. According to airline consultant John Pincavage, what didn't work for Northwest might for American. It allows American to perhaps be more opportunistic in taking advantage of uh, new route awards that come up, new uh, route sales, uh, buying uh, foreign routes of, of other U.S. carriers that may be in financial trouble. Most experts agree the Trump shuttle would be a tempting target for AMR, considering that just recently, Delta took over the Pan Am shuttle for $113 million, and Donald Trump bought the old Eastern shuttle for more than $360 million. And others are interested as well. U.S. Air and United are looking at the feasibility of some deal for the shuttle that connects Boston, New York, and Washington. But with Delta having just acquired the Pan Am shuttle and the Trump operation mired in debt, is there really room for two Northeast shuttle operations? Consultant John Eichner says yes, 
but not because of increased passenger interest. That market's down, but the revenues are up. These guys raised the prices pretty substantially there in the last few years, and probably that's why the market's down. The American talks depend almost as much on price as how the Trump shuttle could feed at acquiring airlines' route structure. One thing for sure, the last thing the Trump creditors want is to repossess the airplane's routes and gates for which they have no use. Dave Monsey, CNBC FNN, New York. AMR, by the way, the parent company of American Airlines, finished the day, uh, there it is, unchanged at 58 and 7 eighths. Elsewhere, share prices of two New England banks were up today on reports a merger agreement is near. Bank of Boston today was up three quarters at 11, while Shawmut National closed up five eighths at nine and seven eighths. Neither bank would comment on reports in several newspapers that the two banks have almost come to an agreement on a merger in which Shawmut shareholders would get nine tenths of one share of Bank of Boston stock for each Shawmut share. The resulting institution would have $56 billion in assets, making it the largest bank in New England. And Security Pacific says its proposed merger with Bank America is on track, and there are no plans to renegotiate the price of that stock transaction. It was responding to a downgrading of its stock by a Prudential Securities analyst who cited the poor state of the California economy and changes in the stock price that indicate some investors think the terms may have to be renegotiated or that the merger could fall through altogether. Security Pacific today was up three quarters at 32. Bank America today up an eighth at $40 per share. In foreign takeover news, British industrial conglomerate BTR PLC launched a $2.6 billion takeover bid for Hawker Siddeley Group. That's a British engineering concern. Hawker Siddeley's board immediately rejected the offer, though, as inadequate. On a per share basis, the offer is worth about 16% above yesterday's closing price. BTR has been active in the takeover field lately. It is currently wrapping up a friendly $339 million buyout of Rockware.